Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a radio replacement in this 2008 Mazda MX-5 Miata. In this install, we're going to be showing you how to replace the factory doubled-in six-disc CD changer here in the dash and upgrade it with something with Bluetooth. Uh, we're going with the Pioneer aftermarket radio, and uh, we're going to show you also how to retain the factory steering wheel controls as well. Let's get started. First thing that we need to do is begin removing panels so we can have access to this factory radio to get it out. According to the schematics, we actually need to get to a bolt here on the side of the radio, and it's kind of tough to get to. The first thing that we need to do is drop down this cover that's at the knees here, and there's exposing Phillips screws. Go ahead and remove these four Phillips screws here. Okay, with those four screws removed, you can remove the, the plate that's up underneath. Now what it's gonna do is expose a 10 millimeter nut up underneath here, and I'm gonna try to get a good shot of it, but I'm gonna use an extension with a 10 millimeter socket to remove that nut, which is the security bolt holding the rest of the dash bezel in. So the, the bolt that we're looking for here is usually right there at the edge of my shadow, and it's missing. Um, we don't want to remove these two bolts, but it's right there. So this is just an indication that this has been out before. Um, the radio has been removed and nobody put that bolt back in. So um, we can actually put this all back together because we won't even have a bolt to put back in there. Um, okay, so at this point, we're back up here in the main dash area. The first thing we need to do is pull these side pieces here. Um, what I like to do is get a panel tool on there and just kind of pop them on out, just held in with clips just like so. And what that's gonna do is expose screws on both sides of the radio. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those screws. So at this point with those screws removed, we can go ahead and give this a tug, just like so. And the harnesses may be a little tight, so just do your best to pull this one out just enough so you can get your fingers in there and start disconnecting harnesses. Okay. So with that removed, what we can do at this point is head over now to the bench and begin prepping our wiring harness in our aftermarket dash kit with the radio and get it all reinstalled. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. Okay, so some of the parts we decided to go with is first and foremost our head unit of choice we went this pioneer uh, avh 210 ex it's a bluetooth dvd touchscreen receiver now so we can house that in the dash we picked up this dash kit which is this metra 99-7506 kit this can house both single and doubled in so it can accommodate basically any radio you put in this for our wiring here today, we're doing this Crux harness adapter. This is the SWRMZ-64C for Mazda vehicles. What's cool about this harness adapter is it integrates um, steering wheel controls and it comes all pre-programmed. Basically, all you have to do is indicate within its brain module what radio you're installing it for. This is the harness that goes with our radio. We're doing, since it's a Pioneer micro bypass here, just so we can access certain settings of our Pioneer while in motion. First thing we're gonna do is get this pulled apart, grab the harness adapter and our radio's wiring harness and begin soldering everything up. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do in order to start prepping the wiring harness is get our chosen wiring harness adapter. And again, we're using this Crux module. So we pulled it out of the box. And the cool thing is this retains steering wheel controls. And like I said before, if you want to check out this unboxing of all its features, we'll have a link in the description for you. Then we have our Pioneer radio wiring harness. This comes with your Pioneer. And essentially here it has similar wiring. So you can match these up essentially color for color about 90% of the time. It's just gonna be a plug and play. You can connect wires either with butt connectors or crimp caps. Today, we're actually gonna be soldering our connections for just a good solid connection. All right, so after we've soldered our connections, just matching color to color, 
we're going to at this point move our heat shrink up and over connections and we'll shrink them down with a heat gun. Now you're probably saying, oh, what about these speaker wires? Why don't we hook these ones up? Because remember, this is the Pioneer side. Well, the answer is for the front speakers on our MX-5, um, we are running an amplifier because we want to throw a little bit more power at them. Being a convertible with that top down on the freeway, it's super loud. So we need a little bit more power than the radio is going to be putting out. So we're using an NVX amplifier and powering it. So we're not going to use the front channels from the radio. We'll just cap these off. The channels where we would connect into. Um, we're using a little bit of speed wire and we're actually going to run an amplifier and our amplified signal from our amplifier will come up and go into the harness as well. So we're just not using the internal front channels of the radio and instead we're going to run our own amplifier. If you want to check out how we did this amplifier, we'll have a link in the description as well as a card up in the video so you can see how we have wired all this up and the amplifier underneath the front seat. Now some special connections to note on our Pioneer. We have a purple white. This is for a backup camera, but we're not running one at this time. So I threw a buck connector on there just to terminate the end, but it make it nice and easy for us to tap into it later on. We're doing a micro bypass since we have a Pioneer radio. Um, this micro bypass allows certain settings while in motion, especially video playback. So we added that too, and that goes to our parking brake wire on our Pioneer. Um, Pioneers nowadays require a double pulse negative or sometimes a triple pulse negative to make that work and that relay provides that. So we just tied that into the ground as you can see here. I just twist both wires together. And then the only other special connection we added um, an extra accessory off the red. Again just added, added it as we twist it together in case we do run a backup camera want to power it here. And then finally for our remote turn on wire we added three wires on this end. Um, this is just a trigger wire. It'll trigger this to this relay to work. Um, it will trigger our aftermarket amplifier that runs through our speed wire. So we hook that up as well. All three of those wires all bundled together. Now at this point, like I said, we're gonna pull the tubing up and over the connection, shrink them down, and then we're gonna wrap our harness in Tessa tape. Okay, so we got this all wrapped up, nice and clean, ready to go. This end plugs into the car side, this end plugs into the Pioneer side. Again, we left our um, trigger wire for our backup camera just out when we add a backup camera, maybe down the road. And an accessory off here as well, just in case we need to power a backup camera or an another accessory of some kind. That's all ready to go as well. So our steering wheel control end here, we got our WR input that goes into the steering wheel control jack on the back of the radio. Don't get this confused with the NOx because it's not. It's for steering wheel controls. We got our dip switches set because we're doing a Pioneer. Uh, one through four dip switch. One and two are off. Three and four are on. And then since it's a Mazda, five through eight is five is off and six, seven, and eight are set to on. So those are all set according to our correct instructions here. So this is done and ready to go. We don't have the Bluetooth module button on our steering wheel for phone answering, so we don't have to hook up that one wire as indicated by the instructions. If you have a newer model that does have the Bluetooth button on your steering wheel, pay close attention to that and refer to your instructions. It'll show you where to hook that on up. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and get the radio mounted in the dash kit. All right, so we have our radio all unboxed and ready to go. We got our dash kit. Let's go ahead and pull the dash kit apart. Now this dash kit will accommodate both single and double dens. If you're doing a double den, you have to cut out the center bracing just because it won't be obviously used and in the way. It also comes with a single den pocket. Again, we're doing a double den, so it's not needed. A single den um, pocket trim, which we don't need. ISO brackets, which we don't need for a single den but it does come with clips, which we do need, as well as the double din brackets, which we do need. What we're gonna need to do to start us off here is cut out this middle support brace, and then we're gonna use these side brackets here. We'll clip them into place, and then get our radio mounted in with the radio supplied mounting screws.
So that's all mounted here in the kit itself. It does come with these little clips here, which will clip on the back here. But once we're fully ready to mount this, in case we have to get everything test fitted, I don't want to actually put these on quite yet, just so I don't reduce the risk of breaking anything. So we'll put these on at the very last minute here. Now, from here, we need to transfer over our HVAC controls from the other dash bezel and using the screws from the other bezel we'll actually get it mounted here in our piece as well let's do that okay so uh, we have the factory radio here uh, what we need to do is transfer over the HVAC controls by removing these four screws and putting them exactly in the same place over on this side Okay, at this point we need to put the clips on this radio bezel and at this point with our wiring harness done and the dash kit on, let's head back to the car and get everything installed. Okay, so at this point we're back here in the car, we're ready to get our radio back in the dash here. So what we've done here is just connected our main wiring harness here. We're doing a front channel amplifier for our door speaker so you can check that video out. That's what our RCAs are for. Um, we have our USB which we ran into the glove box. If you have a Bluetooth mic, make sure you make that connection. We hooked into our antenna. So we got our main connections done. And then make sure you hook up your HVAC controls. One more important one, the WR input on the back of the radio from the Crux adapter. Make sure you plug that in as well. That'll ensure that your steering wheel controls work. Let's start tucking everything away here back behind the radio. Okay, popped all in. Let's make sure we do a test here. So far, so good. Sure all our buttons work here. Yep, everything works. There we are, all done. If you have any questions on what we did here go ahead and post a comment below if you want to see other videos in this series of mx5 miata um go ahead and check the description we'll have a front channel amplifier as well as a door speaker replacement video link available there uh, don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't done so already and we will see you in the next video